Matthews Gatos here. In this video, we will cover section 7.3, solving piecewise functions. And this is part one of the video, which is solving it graphically. But before I get into that, I want to review section 7.2 with you. So given this function, f of x equals x squared minus x minus 2, all in absolute value, write the piecewise function. So the very first thing we want to do is look at the graph. So all I need to know on the graph is the direction of the opening and the x-intercept. That's all I need to figure out what my piecewise function is. So let's start with the positive piece first. So the positive piece is all along here where it is above the x-axis. In here, it's all positive. And when I talk about the function, I say it's all about y. Okay, and the absolute value of a positive is a positive meaning that it stays the same. Now that's going to happen to the right of 2 and to the left of negative 1. So my very first piece is going to be x squared minus x minus 2, and that will happen when x is greater than or equal to 2 or when x is less than or equal to negative 1. So notice I put the equal to in the first case. Okay, so let's look at the second piece. So the second piece is along here where it is negative or below the x-axis. Now, when it is negative, the absolute value of a negative becomes positive. So it is reflected over the x-axis. And that's going to happen in between negative 1 and 2. So to show that it's reflected, it's like multiplying the entire function by negative 1. So a reflection is really where I take all of my x, y, and they become x negative y. Now that negative y doesn't mean that y is negative. It means that it is the opposite sign. So it's like multiplying it by negative 1. So multiplying the entire function by negative 1 or just switching the signs, it becomes negative x squared plus x plus 2. And that occurs in between negative 1 and 2. Notice I don't have any equal signs there. So that's how to write it as a piecewise function. So in this section here, we're going to look at how to solve an absolute value equation. And in part one, we're going to look at this graphically. In part two, we will look at it algebraically. So looking at this, an absolute value function or an absolute value, sorry, equation is any equation, equation meaning it has an equal sign, in which the variable is within the absolute value. So notice here I have absolute value and x is inside. Absolute value, x is inside. A non-example would be this, because if you look inside the absolute value, there is no variable. So the variable has to be inside the absolute value. So we're going to solve this in two different methods graphically. So method number one is called the intersection method. We're going to enter in one side to y1, the other side to y2, and find the x-coordinate of the point or points of intersections. And then since we're doing this graphically, we must have a labeled graph. That's super important. And then we're going to state our solution. This method you might recognize as the way that I check my equations. So to check my equations, I always do left side y1, right side y2, and I check the point of intersection in the table. This method is also used for word problems. So let's look at this first one here. I want to solve this using method number one. So I have absolute value of 2x plus 3 equals to 8. So left side will go in y1, right side will go in y2, and we will find all the important parts of the graph. So I have this one here ready to go. So let's just go ahead and graph that. So I can see that there are two points of intersection, which means there are two solutions. So let's find those first. So I do second trace option number five, which is intersect. And then I'm going to press the down arrow so that I'll be on my line. Okay, and then I'll just toggle over to my closest one first. And I'll press enter three times. One, two, three. So there is my first point of intersection. Let's find our second one. So I'll go second trace again, option number five, down arrow, and I'll toggle over to the other one, pressing enter three times, one, two, three. And there's my second intersection. So I need to also find my intercepts. So let's find our y-intercept. So for a y-intercept, x is zero, so I can use trace. 
So see right now I'm on the blue graph. I can see that by the equation at the top. So if I do trace zero, this will tell me on the blue graph when x is zero, what is y? And I can see it's three. Let's do that now for my red graph. So I'm going to go not second trace. I meant to go trace. Let's try that again. So I'm going to go trace and I'm going to go down arrow. See now here I'm on my red graph. So I'm going to do trace, zero, enter, and I can see my y-intercept is eight. So the only thing left I have to do is find my x-intercept, which happens to be my vertex. So second trace and my vertex is a minimum. So I'll do option number three. And then I just need to toggle over to the left side. Oops, not that left. <laughs> just a little bit to the left side, press enter, and then toggle around to the right side. There we are. Enter and enter one more time. And there's my vertex. So recognize the Y coordinate there is zero in disguise. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put that all together on one graph. So back over here, I found my intersection point, my other intersection point, and now I just want to put that all together on a graph. So when I put it all together on a graph, because I'm solving it graphically, I want to label all of my intercepts, vertex, and point or points of intersection. So these are all the points that we just calculated, neatly labeled on one graph. So the only thing I have left to do is state my solution. My solution is x equals to negative 0.5 or positive 2.5. Let's try that again this time with the quadratic. So you've already seen the steps on the calculator. So you can pause the video right here and do it yourself and then come back and check your answer. So I did this on the calculator. I put left side in Y1, right side in Y2, and I need a graph that is labeled with all of my intercepts, my vertex, and my points or points of intersection. So this is what your graph should look like. Okay, so I have all of my points labeled clearly, my intersection points, my intercepts, and my um, x-intercept. The only thing I notice that I'm missing on here is my vertex. And so my vertex, I am not, I don't have that labeled, but I'm just going to label that right now at 1 and 1. So that's the only thing that I'm missing on that graph. So now let's state our solution. Our solution is x equals to 2 and x equals to 3. Those are the points of intersection. Okay, let's look at method number two. Method number two is the way that I solve every equation. I set every equation equal to zero, and if I'm solving it algebraically, I would factor. If I'm solving it graphically, then I put the entire equation into y1, and I put zero into y2. In this method, it's called the x-intercept method because we're finding the zeros, the roots, the solutions, the x-intercepts of the function. Now this method is best used for solving graphically. So anytime I ask you to solve graphically, method two is where it's at. So if we go back to this question here, solving this using method number two. Now we already solved that using method number one. Let me show you what the difference would be. The difference would be that I am going to subtract eight from both sides. So 8 take away 8 is 0. And then I'm going to have the absolute value of 2x plus 3. And the minus 8 is on the outside of the absolute value. So let's go to our calculator and solve this one. So I'm going to set it up a little differently. So I'm just going to have this here as minus 8. And then I'll put 0 in here. Okay. So now when I hit graph, my graph is going to look different. So set it equal to zero, and I want to find all the important parts of this graph. So let's go ahead and do that again. So let's start with our intersection point. So second trace, option number five, press the down arrow so you're on your x-axis, and we'll go over here and get the intersection point. So enter three times. There it is, negative 5.5, same as it was before. So now I'm going to go second trace into my calculate menu, option five again, down arrow, and I'll go over to this side here, press enter three times, and I get 2.5, which I got last time. Okay, let's do our y-intercept. So I'll go trace, 
and then zero. So this tells me on my blue graph, what is my y-intercept? And I get it at negative five. The only thing I have left to do is label my vertex, which is a minimum. So second, trace option number three for minimum. Toggle around to the left-hand side. Press enter. Toggle around to the right-hand side. Press enter. Enter one more time, and there is my vertex. So now you've seen the same equation solved using method number one and method number two. Get the same answer. This one here just provides us with a cleaner graph. So this is what I'd want to see. Oops, let's try that again. There we are. Okay, so I have, there are my points of intersection, and I'm going to put all of those other important points that I just calculated on one graph. Okay, so all together on one graph, here is what it would look like. Like that, everything that I just found, and then all I have to do is state my solution, which is negative 5.5 and 2.5. Okay, one more using method number two. So you guys can pause the video and try this one here on your own, and then you can come back and look at the answer. So in this method here, I'm going to set it equal to zero first. So absolute value of x squared minus one minus x equals zero. So put the entire left side in y1 and put zero into y2, and here it is all labeled with all my important parts. And I can see that I have one x-intercept, meaning I have one solution. And that solution is 1.6 and 0 0.6. Oh, I lied. There's two points of solution. There it is right there. That label threw me off. That's for this one here. And then this one here is my other solution. So two x-intercepts, two solutions, and there they are. So hope this video helped. You guys can go ahead and do practice one in my notes and then finish off the textbook questions as needed after that. So I hope this helped and I'll see you for part two, which is solving it algebraically.